welcome to the International College Options Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is part one of today's fair. Be sure to join the additional sessions after this one wraps up. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash ICO. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presenter, Queen's University. Hello there. Thank you. Uh, it is great to be with everyone this evening. I'm just going to take a moment and share my screen. Uh, my name is Nathan Martin, and I am an undergraduate admission coordinator here at Queen's University, uh, one of several actually. Very excited to be able to share with you today a little bit more about Queen's University. Um, first, I'd like to acknowledge that Queen's University is located on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe peoples, and we're very grateful to be able to live, learn, and work on these lands. And we want to take a moment just to acknowledge both their historic presence on this land and care for this land, as well as their continued presence and care for this land. Now, we are in Canada in the beautiful historic waterfront city of Kingston, Ontario, just on the northeastern shore of Lake Ontario. By Canadian standards, Queen's is a mid-sized university with approximately 24,000 students in total. Queen's holds a significant place in our country's history. In fact, Queen's was founded in 1841, so that's 26 years before Canadian Confederation. We have over 180 years of experience educating future leaders from around the world. And although we are a university with lots of fun traditions, what continues to make Queen's one of the best universities in Canada is our continued commitment to innovation, research, teaching, and student support. We want you to know that at Queen's, yes, you will be challenged, but you are going to be, while you're being challenged, you will, we will also be there with an amazing array of student services and supports. So if you embrace the challenge and take advantage of the supports that we offer, we're confident that you will succeed. One prime example of a tool that is available to you right now are our major maps. If you were to go onto the Queen's website, type in major maps, you would actually find a literal map of every major or program offered at Queen's University. And these are great tools. They provide uh, information such as a great description of the program or the major, what key courses to take in first year, how to get connected on campus, how to prepare for real world experience, how to prepare for life after graduation even a list of great career options that past grads have gone on into. Now, no matter what you choose to study at Queen's, you can make your degree as unique as you are and choose from additional courses in astrophysics to Latin, commerce, or history. You get to take advantage of instructional styles such as blended learning, integrated face-to-face -face with the online learning opportunity. Um, you'll also be able to engage in maybe the flipped classroom style, taking advantage of world-class professors and learning from these professors in innovative teaching spaces, such as the human media lab that you see here. There is something for everyone at Queen's, and the opportunities to get relevant experience go well beyond the classroom. Everything from arts to athletics, or perhaps uh, an interest club, we have more per capita than any uh, university, I believe, in our province. Uh, anything to complement your interests and lots of like-minded individuals to gather with. There are also summer work experience opportunities such as on-campus or maybe on-campus research, uh, maybe even an entrepreneurial opportunity. And then there's also internships, which are available to students in pretty much every faculty here at Queen's. They're 12 to 16 months, you get to work in your area of specialization, gain some real world experience, start making connections and networking, build your resume, and the average salary for a student is around $43,000 for the year. <clears throat> and of course, throughout your time at Queen's, we'll encourage you to start thinking globally because we live in a global community and we engage in a global marketplace. So consider taking advantage of an exchange or study abroad opportunity with one of our numerous international university partners around the world. Or maybe you'd like to spend a semester at our castle in East Sussex, uh, UK, which serves as our international campus. Queen's attracts some of the best undergraduate students from across Canada and from around the world. And with a 94.6% retention rate, 
Um, we feel this proves that we take our promise to support our students very seriously. And not only do our students make that successful adjustment to university life, they continue to significantly outperform the average when it comes to progressing through their studies and graduating on time. And with a 91% employment rate six months after graduation, our graduates move into the marketplace as very sought after and employable professionals. The Queens is a comprehensive university with program offerings ranging from applied sciences to the social sciences, from humanities to the creative arts and performing arts. So chances are we offer a program that you're interested in. As for those planning to apply uh, for either this fall or the following fall, once you have identified the program or programs that you're interested in applying to, because we let you apply to up to three different programs and equally consider you for all three, um, then it's time to apply. The application opens the beginning of October, it closes the beginning of February, and you can apply through either the OUAC, which is the Ontario University Application Center, or you can apply through the Common App. We are test optional, and the application and evaluation process is fairly heavily based on your high school transcript. If, however, you're applying to a specific program that requires a supplementary essay or maybe an audition or an art portfolio, it will be mentioned on your applicant to-do list. Of course, after you've applied, just continue to monitor your email. That's the primary way we'll communicate with you. And as always, keep working hard because if you do receive an offer of admission while you're in high school, it will be a conditional offer of admission. Now remember, you're going to do great no matter where you go. I just have a feeling that your greatest story could indeed start here at Queens. Thank you so much. Excellent, thank you very much. And uh, next we're gonna hear from the University of Otago. Thank you so much, Matt. I'm just going to share my screen there with me for a moment. Established as New Zealand's first university in, 19, in 1869, today the University of Otago is ranked in the top 1% of universities in the world for QS World Rankings. Academic excellence from a research-led led perspective is what drives Otago, but is a combination of unique factors about the surrounding environment, student culture and atmosphere that really makes Otago stand out. The university's location is also perfect for weekends spent exploring the extraordinary scenery and outdoor adventures that the South Island of New Zealand is famous for. The University of Otago is in Dunedin, a city in the lower South Island with a population of 130,000, approximately 20,000 of whom are students at the university. Education is the main industry of Dunedin, thus making it a true student city of Australasia. The campus is compact with vibrant social student culture and the university is a student town situated within the Dunedin city. Everything is close. Most student accommodation is situated within a two to 10 minute walk from campus and the center of Dunedin city is within 15 minutes walk. Otago is a friendly, supportive and accessible university with over 150 student clubs and societies. And a purpose-built state-of-the-art recreation center, Unipol, that offers a range of indoor and outdoor recreational options for all Otago students to enjoy. The beauty of the natural environment surrounding Dunedin has to be seen to be believed. Dunedin Harbour is a popular place for kayaking, rowing, windsurfing, fishing, or just cycling around the bays. And there, is a and, the and there is a very good reason that Dunedin has been hailed as the wildlife capital of New Zealand. While surfing at some of New Zealand's most renowned surf breaks, you'll find yourself in the company of endemic and sometimes rare species like the, the New Zealand sea lion and the yellow-eyed penguin. Southern right whales and orca can be viewed traveling up the surrounding coastline or even entering the harbor. Mountain bike tracks, tramping and walking routes 
are dotted around the city and surrounding bush clad hills are full of the sounds and sights of beautiful New Zealand bird life. The University of Otago has a unique student dem demographic compared with other universities in New Zealand. We encourage, attract and foster independent people. 85% of our students come from outside Dunedin. To provide accommodation and support for these students, Dunedin has a strong residential college system. 14 accommodation colleges, each with their own distinctive identity, history and traditions, provide an environment that gives new students a great opportunity to develop their independence, build a social network and to succeed in their academic endeavours. New Zealand does not have fraternities or sororities. Another unique aspect of living at Otago is that many international students choose to enrich their experience by living in a university flat, commonly referred to as uni flats, with a New Zealand host as their flatmate. Most student accommodation at Otago, including university flats, is situated within an easy walk to campus. Home to a large number of internationally ranked departments, Otago ranks among the top 100 in the world in 14 different subject areas, with six of these falling in the top 15. That's an amazing accomplishment for a moderately sized university located at the bottom of the world. Not to mention being ranked among the 15 most beautiful campuses in the world. Otago is home to the country's only dental and surveying schools and the only standalone botany program. Otago has the oldest and largest medical school in New Zealand. We have the largest science communication program in the world and the most successful genetics program in Australasia. We have 40 majors in the Bachelor of Arts and our Humanities Division is also home to a number of professional programs like law and education teaching. Humanities covers a broad range of social sciences and art disciplines, offering a wide range of subjects, many are interdisciplinary. What makes Dunedin particularly special for humanities is that we're a UNESCO city of literature. Our business school is ranked number one for research in New Zealand and is internationally accredited with a range of subjects such as entrepreneurship and sustainable business. So what do you need to receive an offer from the University of Otago? No admissions application fee. We keep it really simple. We just want to see your transcripts. We don't want a statement of interest nor documents that you were captain of the football team as long as you gain a minimum threshold to gain university entrance, there is a place for you into the first year. In New Zealand, it's about equity. If you gain university entrance, you gain an international scholarship worth 10,000 New Zealand dollars. Plus, there is the opportunity to apply for US financial aid, which of course means your degree from Otago is recognized back in the US. But the icing on the cake is also the international fees for studying in New Zealand. As you can see, you can get a lot more bang for your buck. Even the cost of living is reasonable. Plus, you can work 20 hours a week and full time in the holidays. We know that at times the international student journey is not easy, which is why we have a range of support services available for you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victoria. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Naomi from the International College Options to share a little more about the organization. Hi, everybody. Uh, a belated welcome for joining us tonight. I had to introduce another session first, so I'm hopping on now. Um, I am Naomi Ewing, President and Director of College Relations for International College Options. I'm located in the Denver area. ICO started in 2013 to educate school counselors, students, families, parents, about opportunities for US students to pursue their bachelor degrees abroad. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization run by a completely voluntary board. We are all former or current school counselors. Every year in November during International Education Week, 
we sponsor usually in-person events, uh, a, an evening college fair followed by a morning or afternoon college breakfast or lunch in various cities. Uh, in the even years, we have traditionally hosted in Detroit, Chicago, Denver. We're hoping to do that again next year. Obviously, uh, this is a virtual event because of the pandemic. So this is a first for us. Uh, we create a booklet also every year with information about all our institutional partners. The 2021 booklet is available on our website. I will put a link to the booklet in the chat box uh, before I leave this session. And tonight you will hear from five institutions, six minutes each, but I think you all know that there are other sessions going on simultaneously uh, with insti other different institutions in those sessions. And at the end of this first hour, they will each, all the individual institutions will be hosting a virtual chat room. So even if you could not attend the other sessions, if you would like to meet individually with any of the universities participating tonight, please go to the link. I will also put that link in the chat box to the PDF document that has all the individual links to the virtual rooms of the institutions participating tonight. They will be hosting their own individual rooms, as I said, the hour after this group session. In a couple of weeks, we will be sending surveys out both to the participating organizations as well as the attendees. Please do give us your feedback to help us improve future events. Uh, and without further ado, please enjoy the sessions tonight. Uh, we hope you enjoy presentations and thanks again for attending. Excellent, thank you very much, Naomi. And next up, we will hear from Jacobs University. All right, hello, hello, hello. It is 1 a.m. in Germany. Let me share some slides for you. Okay, from the beginning. That's not the beginning, go back. All right, so we're talking about Jakobs University in Germany, the land of Oktoberfest and schnitzels and castles and Mercedes-Benz, but also excellent education. The number one international university in Germany is Jakobs. So that's me, Ryan Maroka, a recruitment counselor. Uh, I'm originally from the US, now living in Germany. Jakobs is an English speaking university. All your classes would be in English. So there is no requirement to have any German knowledge before you come. Here are some statistics about us. Um, we are a small university, just about 1,000 undergraduate students, so a pretty tight knit community. And I think the best thing about us is just how multicultural we are. So this year we are now at 100 and different, 115 different nationalities represented. So you certainly can meet students make connections, make friends for a lifetime from all over the world, maybe even countries you've never even heard of. That's an overhead view of our campus, a lot of green space, as you can see. Uh, you can enjoy the outdoors with your friends. Uh, academic excellence is certainly something that we are strong in. All of our programs are fully accredited and recognized around the world. Our professors are known for their research. Um, students get right into the research laboratories, regardless of your major, right in the first semester. We have an interdisciplinary approach, so our professors are very good at bringing in multiple subjects into the discussion, into the research, and it really helps you develop those knowledge or that knowledge and those skills that will uh, make you very hireable in your future. We have an 18 to one student to teacher ratio. So you're not gonna sit in those giant lecture halls of 200, 300 students. And it's very common for you to work very closely with your professor and get to know them very well as a great resource. One-to-one -one academic advising to guide you through uh, the processes and in your years at Jakobs. All of our bachelor's programs require a two month internship, again, to get, build that practical uh, experience uh, that will get you hired in a good position. And you do have the opportunity to study abroad. Quick question for you. And the answer is curry versus pumice. 
All right, that's where we're located, northern Germany, about an hour from the North Sea, pretty centrally located. So uh, you certainly can take advantage of the opportunity to travel while you have time off. The important thing, what do we offer? Three focus areas. These are the programs within each focus area. So we do have uh, some IT majors as well as math. Um, we have natural sciences under our health program and under diversity, those are our social sciences. I'll post a link to these so you can take a look if you're interested uh, in the chat box and feel free to stop by uh, my separate session later. Uh, that is downtown Bremen, just to give you an idea what the city center looks like. Nice European architecture. Here's another quick question about your uh, German innovation. And it's a trick question. All of the above are the answer invented by Germans. This is where our students come from. As you can see, the largest percentage do come from Europe, but we certainly have representation from all over the world. I mentioned that you can study abroad. These are our partner universities. So in your fifth semester of the six, I didn't mention that, but the fifth semester we leave pretty open if you would like to gain yet another uh, cultural experience. And our bachelor's degrees of note are three years. They're all three-year programs instead of the typical four years that you see in the US. This is where our alumni have ended up over the years. Uh, obviously, Europe, uh, European countries have quite strong economies, so there certainly are job opportunities within Germany and the rest of Europe. A lot do head back to the U.S. as well. Um, this is what our students have gone on to do, our graduates. We have a startup program, and we do have several successful startups. Uh, further studies at very prestigious universities, and then going on to working uh, for some big well-known companies, some NGOs, some nonprofits, you name it, we have graduates there. All right, another question, and then I better wrap it up quickly. Mercedes, yes, so what does it take to get in? We are on the Common App. Um, we do need letter of recommendation. We cannot go test optional. Unfortunately, it's a German state mandate for us to have an entrance exam. That's either the SAT or ACT. Essay, short answers, transcript. If you're an English speaker, you don't have to prove English proficiency. The money quickly. In total, 29,000 includes room and board, 29,000, but with our financing options, you take a huge chunk off of that through automatic academic achievement scholarships, a tuition deferral program, basically buy now or study now, pay later, uh, and need-based financial aid in the form of grants. So uh, we have a, a vibrant campus life, lots of clubs, lots of fun. Uh, private bedrooms, private bedrooms instead of sharing a room, that's pretty awesome. And I will leave it there. My time is up. Stop by if you want to know more. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ryan. Uh, next up, we will hear from the University of Sheffield. Thank you. Um, great. Cheers, Ryan. Um, so, hi, everyone. Um, hopefully, you can see my screen now. Um, so, my name is Tony Dolby, and I am the International Recruitment Manager for the Americas at the University of Sheffield. Uh, my contact details on the screen, or feel free to drop in later on if you have any questions. So, the University of Sheffield is based in the UK, and it is a leading global university. So, we are ranked within the World Top 100, according to the QS World Rankings, and we're ranked 13th in the UK um, in the Times Higher Education World University Rankings. We are a member of the Russell Group, which is a group of 24 research intensive and research focused universities in the UK. Um, and we're in the top 10% of UK universities for research excellence. Um, so we're a really great institution to come to. And we hope that by coming to us, we're um, developing graduates that will solve the challenges of today's world. We currently have around 29,000 students on campus um, from around 150 different countries across the world. So we really are an international um, community at Sheffield. We have five faculties at the University of Sheffield um, with around 50 departments spanning across these five faculties. 
Um, and we offer a variety of different um, courses that will help our students um, develop the passion of, of their subject area. So on the screen, you can just see a few different subjects. Um, this is not everything, but if you do want to find out more, come and ask me or visit our web pages. We have a really good reputation um, for producing great graduates. Um, and on the screen, you can see some of the companies that our graduates have gone to work for. Um, these include the Bank of America, Airbus, um, Toyota, IBM, some really amazing um, global companies that we have some excellent links with. Um, we also have links with more regional um, and local companies um, to, to England and Sheffield. Just some statistics to give you an idea of where we are at with our graduates. So we are in the top three universities in the Yorkshire number for graduate prospects. Um, we have one of the top five career services in the UK and 96% of our graduates are in work or further study within six months of completing their course. So by coming to Sheffield, you will be joining a long line of outstanding alumni, um, some of them dating back all the way to eight, 1925, um, such as Amy Johnson, um, who was one of the first women to fly solo. Um, all the way up to the kind of the modern day, up to um, Dame Jessica Ennis Hill, um, who graduated us from 2007 um, and is a gold medal um, Olympic athlete. We have um, a very active US alumni um, association and a US alumni chapter um, that do lots of work to help our current students um, develop those links for, for once they've graduated studying with us. So Sheffield is located in England. Um, it is located in the north of England in the region of Yorkshire. Um, so on the UK, map of the UK, it's pretty much central, um, centrally located. You can get to London within two hours and our closest international airport is Manchester Airport. There's lots of things to do in Sheffield. Um, so we are very close to the Peak District, which is a national park. Um, that offers the opportunity to go hiking, mountain biking and climbing um, and have that um, experience of like the typical British countryside. We have a music festival every year, um, which is called Tramlines, which I would highly recommend. Um, Sheffield has also been voted the most affordable student city in the UK. Um, that is according to the NatWest Student Living Index. So by coming to Sheffield, um, you really are getting the best value for money. Speaking of money, um, we offer scholarships for high achieving undergraduate students. Um, so if anyone start thinking of starting in 2020-22, we have 75 scholarships available that are worth a 50% discount in tuition fees. And these are available for the full duration of your course, um, whether that be three or four years for an undergraduate. We are a FAFSA accredited school um, and we do accept financial aid um, from, from students coming from the US. Here's just a profile um, of one of our current students, Claire, who's from the US, and she was the undergraduate merit scholarship, scholarship winner. Um, so just to kind of pick out um, a key point from her is do your research. And once you're sure that Sheffield is the best decision for you, um, it's time to get excited. So our students really do um, value the, the, the university and the, the choices that they've made. To apply to study at the University of Sheffield, um, all applications for undergraduate courses are made through UCAS, which is the Universities and Colleges Admissions Service, uh, which is a central service to the UK. Um, our entry requirements, we would be looking for a US high school diploma with um, a GPA of 3.0 or above, um, plus three APs, um, typically at grades 554 to 555, and this will vary on the course. Um, that you're interested in. We can also accept college or honours level classes in lieu of one AP. Um, and for anyone that's previously taken the SAT subject test, then we will continue to accept these. So thank you ever so much for listening. Um, as I said, my contact details are on the screen. So if you do want to find out anything more about the University of Sheffield, um, then please feel free to drop by um, and have a chat with me later or ask any questions now in the Q&A box. Thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, next up is the University of Strathclyde. Thanks, Matt.
I'll just share my screen with you. Perfect. So good evening, everyone. My name is Melissa Cunningham. I'm the Senior International Recruitment Officer at the University of Strathclyde, which you can probably tell from my accent is based in Scotland. We're based in Glasgow, which is the biggest city in Scotland. Just to run, few, um, run through a few facts about the university. So we're quite an old institution. We were established over 200 years ago in 1796. We were established as um, the place for useful learning. So our founder, John Anderson, wanted to establish a place where students would take the skills that they learned at the university um, for the good of the, um, their local area and beyond. We're a big institution of over 23,000 students um, from over 100 different countries, so quite an international student scene here. And over the past couple of years, we're, be, we're very proud of the accolades that we have, we have received. We have been recognised as UK University of the Year in 2019 by Times Higher Education. We are the first university in the UK to have won this award twice. We also won it back in 2012. As well as that, we were awarded Scottish University of the Year 2020 and quite a prestigious prize whereby our principal received this award at Buckingham Palace is the Queen's Anniversary Prize 2020. We do, um, we do have a lot of research going on at our university. And we won this award in particular for our research in energy innovation. Probably the most, um, the, the, the award that we're most proud of, or, or rather the recognition is by your students. And that's attested and as um, being placed fourth in the UK for student satisfaction um, by the National Student Survey. Um, and this takes into account student experience um, and graduate employability the teaching and the student services that we offer in the university as well. So quite a high standard that um, we have been recognised um, because of this by our own students, which is great. So I mentioned we're situated in Glasgow. Glasgow is the biggest city in Scotland and we're in the heart of the downtown area. Glasgow is about a 45 minute drive um, or train ride from Edinburgh, which is the capital of Scotland. Um, and we're about a one hour flight from London, so fairly easy to get to Glasgow from the US. We do have an international airport as well, just outside of the city centre. There's lots going on in Glasgow. It's quite a big student city itself. We have um, six universities in and around the, the, the city. Um, we have world class shopping and um, lots of bars and restaurants as well. We're known as the UNESCO City of Music, so typically we have over 130 gigs and concerts per week. Um, and more recently over the years, we've ploughed a lot of investment into renovating our sports facilities. And because of that, we've been host to many different sporting events over the past few years, such as the Commonwealth Games and the European Championships a few years ago. More recently, and it's been extensively covered um, in the news, Glasgow was the host city of COP26. And actually, we were, we were really delighted and honoured um, to uh, host Barack Obama's visit to the Strathclyde campus uh, just last week. And I have been informed that he has been given a lifetime membership of our student union. So you never know, we might see him in our, in our sports centre in years to come. So we, as I mentioned, we are situated in the heart of downtown area. This is our campus. It's quite a self-contained campus. Very walkable city. You can reach the main um, transport hubs within a five, 10 minute walk. Um, so as I say, it's very easy to get around the city itself. Over the past 10 or so years, the university has ploughed over one billion pounds investment into renovating and rejuvenating our facilities. We opened our £31 million Strathclyde Sports Centre a few years back, our Technology and Innovation Centre, which is home to local um, government organisations and industry, which is situated on campus, and our academics and our students can avail of the, the innovation and research that's going on there. We've refurbished our library quite recently, 
Um, and just a couple of months ago, we opened our new learning and teaching building, which is a one-stop shop for all our student services. So typically undergraduate uh, study, um, I'll run through this and, and what it looks like in Scotland in particular. At Strathclyde, we have four faculties. We have engineering, humanities and social science, our business school and science. Strathclyde itself, we're ranked um, within the top 10 in the UK in 24 subject series. You can see some of them here. And in Scotland, it's important to note that it's four years duration for a bachelor's degree like the US system. In Scotland, this means that there, you'll find a lot of flexibility within the degree course itself, particularly at Strathclyde within our business school in humanities and social sciences. You can pick and choose different subjects in the first two years of study before you decide what you want to major in. We have over 200 degree combinations at Strathclyde and our most popular courses are journalism, media and communications, politics, international relations, and social policy. Those are our most popular subjects amongst our US students who come and study with us. Our application process, like Tony at Sheffield had mentioned, you can apply through UCAS or directly. We do have a um, test optional this year. Our tuitions are comparable to out of state fees, and we do have scholarships available as well. I'll wrap up just now, but I'll pop my contact details into the chat if you want to get in touch with me to find out a little bit more about that. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thanks so much. Uh, and so now before we wrap up this session, we have some time for some Q&A with our presenters and I'd invite them all to uh, come back on camera and respond to this question. What is one piece of advice you would give someone going through the college search process? Uh, and I'll ask our presenters to respond in the same order that they presented. So uh, Nathan from Queens, you're up first. And you're muted. Sorry about that. I got frazzled. Could you state the question one more time for me, please? Yes, of course. Uh, one, what is one piece of advice yeah. you would you would give to someone going through the college search process? Certainly. Sorry. Yes. Um, the one bit of advice I, I tend to like to share uh, is to really encourage students to take advantage of the opportunity to connect with with real people. Um, websites are excellent tools, um, a great way to gather information, um, but they also have contact information and opportunities to connect with individuals like ourselves, uh, admission staff who are there ready and willing to help answer questions, to help you navigate the admissions process, and also um, to potentially help you get connected with current students so you can really get an inside look at what it's like to be a student at one of our institutions. So I always encourage students to take advantage of the real people um, behind the websites who are more than happy to, to talk with you and answer questions. Thanks. Yeah, that, that's a great, great answer, Nathan. I totally support that as well. And I think a lot of the, probably a lot of the universities too have um, platforms that, um, for example, like we have uni buddies where you can actually chat with current students that were either in the program you're interested in or from the country that you're in, or you know, just to find out what's the weather like down there, et cetera. So yeah, definitely take advantage of those um, platforms that the university has. Um, you know, there's no such thing as a silly question as well. And um, you know, do your research, use social media a lot to find out too about the, um, the culture of the university and, and the, the country and the location as well. Yeah, I think it's my turn. Uh, I agree with everything that's been said so far. Uh, what can I add? I mean, remember, it's about you. We're all trying to get you to come to our universities, but in the end, you need to choose what the best fit is for yourself. So keep that in mind. Thanks. Yep, I'll second everything else that's already been said. Um, I would add, if you are particularly thinking of coming to the, the UK um, and potentially making your application through the UCAS admission system, do some research on how the application process works. Um, it is slightly different to maybe what you're used to in the US. So 
um, definitely read up on the personal statement is something that I would say and you know make sure that you're you've researched the the city that you're going to live in you're going to be there potentially three four years um you want to you know enjoy it outside of your academics as well and I'll just kind of echo what everyone else has said as well but as um as places and, and countries open up a little bit more um you know it might be more practical to actually visit um, and tour campuses but also don't forget and I guess with the pandemic as well you know we are all quite adept at um, virtual visits now as well and that's a good way just to get a sense of what campus and, and student life is, is like um, so have a search for that on on the websites and, and definitely talk to the the reps about um, about virtual tours as well and we can set you up with something like that. Excellent. Thank you all. Wonderful advice. Uh, so our next question is, what is one thing you would like students to remember about your institution? Okay, well, um, one thing that I'd like you to remember about Queens, uh, really that it's uh, Queens is Kingston and Kingston is Queens. The, uh, the city itself that we're in it's about 124,000 students and Queens is 24,000 students. So we're very much a part of the community. Um, it's rated one of the, the top university towns in the world and it's rated that for a reason. So if you ever get a chance to check out the campus before <laughs> actually applying, um, you'll discover it for yourself. Um, uh, it's a very historic city. It's beautiful, very walkable. And, uh, and, and we're, you're always encouraged to, to become part of the, the city community as well as the Queens campus community. It's quite funny, um, Queens and Otago are sister universities, but part of the Marariki network, which is uh, universities around the world that are very similar in history and in a university city and things like that. Um, with Otago, probably one um, takeaway to, to remember, I suppose, is Otago has the largest number of US students in New Zealand that studies at a university. Um, so we're doing something right here. But I think one of the reasons is that um, on one of my slides, I said we were um, fifth year running the, um, have the overall best student experience for international students. And that's... Um, a benchmarking exercise done by a private company called Study Moves, and I think they um, so we're benchmarking ourselves by with against New Zealand universities, Australia universities, and I think maybe you some UK universities. So um, yeah, you're you're not a number, you're a person when you come to Otago. All right, and for Jakobs, I would say um, the international experience is, is truly invaluable. Uh, I was a high school history teacher for 12 years and you know I typically had a classroom with, with all American students, maybe a few foreign students, and they would share their perspectives on historical events, but this to be able to sit in a classroom with potentially students from 20, 30, 40 different countries and hear them share their perspectives having potentially lived through events that Americans just can't relate to, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing experience. Um, for Sheffield, I would say that we really do put focus on your career prospects um, throughout the duration of your time with us. Um, so both through during your course, um, through all the extracurricular um, support that we give you um, for your careers. So, um, and we have some great links with amazing um, companies. Yeah, and, and for Strathclyde, and I, I suppose um, in general in Scotland, um, I've mentioned before, it's important to note that we have the four year degree structure. Um, so I guess we, our strength is the flexibility and breadth of, stu of study in certain um, faculties when you come to study with us. There's no gen ed, you choose what you, which classes you want to do. You can pick up classes that you probably haven't done um, or haven't studied at high school. Um, and as I said, it will, you know, a couple of years um, before you decide what you want to major in. So it's great flexibility for students who are maybe not too sure what they want to do. And as I said, that's true for all Scottish institutions, the four-year degree structure. 
Excellent. Thank you all very much. Um, so that brings us to the end of this session. So I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you to all of our presenters for joining us from around the world. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick uh, four question survey and we do appreciate your feedback. We encourage you to check the schedule and sign up for more sessions and you'll be able to find a recording of this session as well as other sessions at strivescan.com slash ICO. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you.